Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week we have 13 incredible watches for you guys and girls from a gorgeous 18 karat gold Piaget with diamonds, something we don't see often at Kibble Watches, to limited edition Grand Seiko which is number 011 of 1500, uh, to an Amiga Speedmaster, to some Seiko, some more affordable bits, a Hublot, a vintage Amiga, you name it we have it in this week's drop. So there really is a wide variety. And as always, that's what we aim to achieve here at Kibble Watches. Now, if you are new here, every Saturday, 9.30 a.m., we put new watches on the website. Down in the description of this video, you'll see every single watch linked. So you can go straight to the website, see all the extra photos, the details, the price, and whether it's still available. And obviously you can make purchase directly through the website or send an inquiry. And we can obviously see what we can do for you. Um, and that is pretty much it. Oh, timestamp as well. You can skip to the specific watch. So let's say you're here just to see this awesome Vertex. Skip all my rambling of all the others. You can go straight to that. Now, before we crack on with the watches on the table, what's on wrist? I'm wearing my personal Rolex. This is the Oyster Date Precision, reference 6694 from about circa 1969. Uh, it's a watch that's been in my collection for some time now on its original rivet bracelet, beautiful dial. This is one that I do not intend to ever really sell. I've got a lot of personal attachment to it. It holds some significant situations in my life as well. But as always, you know, if needs must, but hopefully they don't come to that. So this is going to be on my wrist for the foreseeable. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's crack on with what you're here to see. And that's the watches on the table. We're going to start with this awesome limited edition Grand Seiko with the power reserve, beautiful blue dial. And as I say, number one of 1,500. Not often you get to see a limited edition that's number one. So let's take a closer look. So starting this week off with an absolutely gorgeous and special Grand Seiko. This is a manually wound power reserve limited edition of 1,500 pieces with the most incredible textured dial. Now for those of you who have been lucky enough to experience Grand Seiko before, you will know their dials are definitely one of the most talked about features, of course, with the finishing overall and their mechanical ability, but the dials are definitely the highlight, and this one is no exception. Beautiful gold Grand Seiko applied logo at the top with Grand Seiko stated underneath, and that is it, really, for text on the dial, making it very, very open, and all the highlight being on that texture, which hopefully you'll get in a decent picture of right now. You can see the Zeratsu finishing on the hands and indices which just play with the light and really lends itself to just be admired. Um, and this is the reference SBGK005G. And as I say, this is limited edition uh, of 1,500 pieces. And if you can see it, probably not on here, but you'll be able to see it on other additional video uh, photos. It's number 0001 of 1,500. This isn't the case where some limited editions are one of, where they say one of 1,500. This is number one of one of, uh, of 1,500. That was a bit of a mouthful. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. You can see the movement through that uh, that exhibition case back. That's a manually wound Grand Seiko Caliber 9S63. A beautiful and well done movement, as I say, with a power reserve right there. Beautifully finished case, as you'd expect. Grand Seiko logo at three o'clock and just a really nice case profile. Definitely on the larger size, but it wears beautifully on the wrist. And this one's from March 2019 with its box and paperwork. It comes on its original strap with its deployant uh, Grand Seiko buckle right there with the buttons. Something to keep in mind is I technically have this on the wrong way uh, to how Grand Seiko supply it. The reality is I find it more comfortable this way and you can just swap it around. It's not the end of the world. So I've had some people say, you've got the strap on the wrong way. Okay, does it matter? No, you can swap it. If you want it the other way, I can do that prior to shipping. Just let me know. Um, I find it fits and sits nicer on the wrist on this way. But that's enough of that. Let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. As you can see, it sits on the wrist really nicely and the profile is just beautiful. This is 38.5 mil by 43.5 mil lug to lug, 12 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lugs. It's a little awkward, but there are plenty of options out there. Although the strap pairing, I think, su think suits it perfectly. So go check this one out on the website. From there to a beautiful and rare Piaget. This is from 1979. It's part of the Classique. Uh, it's yellow gold with onyx dial and diamonds throughout the dial and the case manually wound as well. So let's take a closer look at this now one. On to something undeniably beautiful, even if it's not your personal taste. Hopefully you can appreciate how sort of amazing this is. This is a gorgeous Piaget Classique with a black onyx dial, diamond pave setting throughout, which is like the pavement setting of Round Brilliance. And then the case is also set with Round Brilliance. This is all factory 
original and really beautifully done Piaget there, proudly stated on almost a gold plaque and simple two hands. That is it. There's, a, there's not much more in terms of the design. It's just a beautiful piece of jewellery, I would say, for the wrist. Uh, crown at three o'clock, and as we flip it around, you're presented with a screw-down case back with a slightly protruding sensor, which has all the details of the watch on. So this is a reference 40825, and inside there is a manually wound Piaget Caliber 4P, a movement that Piaget used quite a lot during this period, the sort of 70s and early 80s. This one is circa 1979. It does come with its original strap, which is quite worn, and then a matching strap, which is very similar to the original and it has its 18 karat gold Piaget buckle, so 18 karat gold case as well. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. Um, not a huge amount more to say on this one. If you're into this kind of design, this was originally advertised as a ladies watch, but the reality is this actually came in on a man's wrist and I suspect it will probably go out on a man's wrist. It really doesn't matter. If you feel comfortable with the size, you like how it looks, that's all that matters. Uh, me and my wife share our watches and we switch and swap between between the watches we wear quite regularly as long as it's not on a bracelet because we have different sized wrists. So a watch like this, I could very easily wear and she could wear. Um, but let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and you can be the decider of whether that's something for you or not. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, if you have my wrist size or larger, you're probably gonna wanna get a longer strap because it just about fits me. I can punch more holes in, but you're getting to the point where you're not gonna be able to tuck much more of the uh, the end bit into the strap, um, the keepers. But yeah, really, really elegant in terms of its proportions. At 20 by 25 mil, only 4.5 mil on the thickness and 15 mil at the lugs. Um, so there are options out there with a watch like this. I'd say go bespoke, go speak to Strap Tailor and choose what you want. It's gonna look great on pretty much any strap. Uh, you can imagine. So go check it out on the website today. From the smallest watch on the table to probably one of the biz biggest watches on the table, that's the Amiga Speedmaster 57. This is the coaxial automatic, so it is on the thicker side, but it's got a beautiful exhibition case back. Black doll, let's take a closer look at this one. Now for the now discontinued Amiga Speedmaster 57, as it's in reference to the original 1957 Speedmaster, which had straight lugs and broad arrow hands. As you can see, this hasn't quite got broad arrow hands. Well, it has arrow hands. It doesn't have the, the broad arrow um, that we distinctively think of for the 57. Uh, you've got date over at three o'clock, a subdial which shows both minutes and hours for the chronograph, and obviously traditional chronograph starts stop and reset as you'd expect running seconds at nine o'clock so a nice bi compact layout meaning two registers and amiga speedmaster proudly stated at 12 o'clock with an applied logo there uh, fixed tachymeter bezel uh, which again very reminiscent of the 1957 speedmaster which had this stainless steel bezel not like the ceramic uh, or what well, they're ceramic now but the aluminium bezels that we remember um, signed crown and pushers right there and as you can see, it comes on its three link bracelet with polished center links. Now we have decided to leave the watch unpolished as it has never been polished. Um, and we can have that done on request if you so like. So just let me know. Deploying class right there. And then onto the big exhibition case bag. Now I won't bore you with the reference of the watch. It's always with Amiga. It's a nice long reference, but that right there, the movement you're looking at is an automa automatic coaxial Amiga caliber 9.3. Zero, zero. And before the latest Speedmasters, which are now coaxial, the standard professional models, you had to go for models like these to get coaxial movements. Um, so yeah, this one's February 2021 with its box and paperwork. Let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. Here we go on my seven inch wrist. And again, it's no small watch, but if you are wanting something a bit beefier, a bit heavier than your traditional Speedmaster, this is one I would consider. And I'd also say maybe book an appointment if you are unsure to come try it on your own wrist to see for yourself. Uh, so this is 41.5 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 16 mil on the thickness, so it is a thick watch, and 20 mil on the lugs, so endless options for that one. But go check it out on the website today. Now let's get on to some Habrings. We actually have two on the table, and we haven't had any in a little while, so this is exciting. This is the Habring Chrono Felix Sports manually wound 38.5 mil with a beautiful dial monopusher chronograph. Let's take a closer look. Now for the Habring Chrono Felix Sports, this is a really great and beautiful watch, as you can see, monopusher chronograph. So as we start that chronograph right there, that vibrant red chronograph second starts going round. You have the inner, um, inner sort of tachymeter right there in red uh, with the black, which crosses over to the silvered subdials, very reminiscent of sort of 50s chronographs from the likes of Tissot and a couple of others. But yeah, monopusher means it all works through one pusher, so start, stop, and reset. Running seconds over at nine o'clock and a 30 minute totalizer at three o'clock. 
12 and 6, nice, bold and stated beautifully and almost like an eggshell tone. Very hard to describe, very creamy. And again, it just gives that sort of vintage style, but in a modern sports setting. I think it's done very, very nicely. And Habering is a brand I would highly recommend reading about on our website. We have a little bit of a bio. He used to work at IWC and did a lot of very important things mechanically there. And he's brought that over to his own watches. So as I say, this is the Chrono Felix Sport. And as we flip it over, you're presented with a beautiful movement that are done in-house by Habering. Um, I believe they use base movements and then heavily modify them to their standards and finishing. So this is what they call a manually wound Habring caliber A11C-H1. And this one's from October 2022 with its box and paperwork. And it comes on its original strap and buckle. These buckles are unsigned, but they are original. And the strap is like a nice vintage style, as you can see. And the boxes are very ergonomic. They're like wooden boxes. They have little bits inside and a couple of parts at the bottom um, for future serviceability if ever you know, they stop doing the watches, which I don't see them doing, but it's a nice thing they actually provide. So let's show this one on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we go. On my 7-inch wrist, you can see these wear very well. They've got their proportions sort of spot on. Uh, for my size wrist I think and obviously smaller wrist can totally get away with a bigger wrist completely as well So this is 38.5 mil by 46 mil lug to lug only 11.5 mil on the thickness Which is quite thin for this complication and 20 mil on the lug so endless options for swapping this one out So go check it out on the website today from there over to another Habering this time I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation. So I apologize in advance the food Riante. I think that's how you say it Felix white manually wound this is the jumping seconds or deadbeat seconds seconds with the one eighth of a second on the dial as well there's a lot going on with this watch really incredible piece of kit so let's take a closer look now on to another hat bring this time the food royant felix i probably pronounced it completely different to how i did in the intro in the hopes that at least one of them is right so i apologize if neither is right and i butcher the pronunciations but uh, hopefully you come here to see the watches and not for the pronunciations you can see this watch is going crazy in that subdial. That's one eighth of a second spinning around and your seconds is what we call a deadbeat seconds where it ticks like a quartz watch. And you can see Habering have beautifully executed that to hit every marker precisely and accurately. It's just really attractive and great to see and quite a hard thing to achieve. Um, a nice sort of silver dial, nice case profile, very much in Habering's wheelhouse of design. And as we flip it over, you're presented again with a beautiful movement and you're able to see that center wheel ticking like a quartz watch. Really fascinating with the balance there spinning away. And this is a manually wound Habring caliber A11MF. This watch is from circa 2021 with its box and paperwork. Original Habring strap and it also comes with an additional one. This is like an ostrich strap which just suits the watch beautifully, especially with those blued hands, especially when you catch that light and they just pop. Really, really interesting. And as I said with the last one, a great brand, well worth checking out. And they seem to have somehow missed the hype train of all these independent brands that are just taking off at the moment. These can still be had under retail and can still be picked up oftentimes at retail as well. Um, obviously, we've got a nice saving on retail, so definitely check it out. But I don't know why they've, they've gone relatively missed for whatever reason so uh let's see if we can change that but let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist again super comfortable really nice profile and it just fits the wrist nicely they're not too big they're not too small they're sort of hitting that sweet spot and that might be why maybe they're getting missed because a lot of the brands they're really branching out into some crazy stuff you know you look at the uh well i mean most of them right whereas this sort of just sits nicely in the unobtrusive and, and not too loud so maybe that's why um, but this is 38.5 mil by 46 mil look to look, 12 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the looks. It's endless options. Go check it out on the website today. From two Habrings to now two Chrono Tokyos, you can see the pairing is going pretty well in this week's drop. We're going to start with this one. This is an early Chrono Tokyo before they changed it to Chrono Tokyo. A um, little bit of a difference in the spelling. So this one actually says Chrono Tokyo on the dial. Very, very cool. This is one of the Hajime, um, again, I butcher pronunciation, so please do forgive me. Hajime Soko Bullseye 37 mil. I can say the bullseye bit. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now onto a really wonderful early Chrono Tokyo automatic bullseye, as it's named because of the dial, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's like this multi-patterned or textured, sorry, um, sector dial which has got this like browny gray hue to it. Very, very beautifully done. And it just begs to be in the light like that. So you can actually see those textures. 
the classic Chrono Tokyo hands that we've all become sort of very familiar with. And as you can see at the top at 12 o'clock, Chrono Tokyo proudly stated this is before they changed the sort of branding and the name. Uh, as I say, an early reference, this is the reference CT004S. And as we flip it over, everything about it is pretty much what you'd expect with a Chrono Tokyo. You can see all the writing right there on the back, reference and serial. Proudly stated there, screw down case back and inside is an automatic Miyota Calibre 90S5, so part of the 9000 series, which is the high grade Miyota. So these are the, some of the top Japanese movements you can get. And this one's from November 2020 with its box and paperwork ready to be worn and enjoyed. Um, yeah, not an awful lot more to say about this watch other than it's absolutely beautiful and it looks amazing on the wrist. And let's show it on the wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. This is the sort of design that really works with any sort of occasion really, formal, casual, you know, whatever it might be, this is gonna look good. And playing around with the straps, you can probably make it look completely different. I think a nice dark brown would completely change the look. Um, so this one, as I say, November 2020 box and papers, it's 37 mil by 43 mil lug to lug, 10.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug, soundless options for swapping this one out. Go check it out on the website today. From there to a much easier to pronounce one, this is the Chrono Tokyo Toki Salmon Dial Automatic in the 37 mil. Beautiful watch, let's take a closer look. Okay, here we go from Chrono Tokyo to Corono Tokyo. I probably should do a better job of pronunciating that so you know which one's which, but as you can see at 12 o'clock, um, you have Chrono Tokyo stated right there. Again, the beautiful Chrono Tokyo hands we come to expect. And this time, this is the Toki model with that beautiful salmon tone dial, which just plays with the light. And you have these concentric applied rings, which again, as soon as that catches a light, just adds another depth to the dial, which is what Chrono Tokyo are absolutely great at. These subtle details that completely transform the watch when actually being worn, um, in my opinion anyway. So this is the reference CU0010. As we flip it around, you'll see the standard Chrono Tokyo profile you've come to expect with a screw down case back right there. And inside an automatic Miyota Calibre 90S5. Another workhorse movement used by uh, Chrono Tokyo, the high grade Miyota movements. And this one's from October, uh, for, sorry, from July 2021 with its box and paperwork. And that's including the big shipping box as well as the extra bits and bobs it comes inside with. So do check our photos to see exactly what it comes with because we have sold quite a few Chrono Tokyo, some that have their box and papers, which is what it is, some that have the shipping box and all the extra bits as well. So do keep an eye out for what comes with what. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Again, super comfortable. Uh, 37 mil by 43.5 mil lug to lug, 11 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs. Sandless options for this one. Definitely the black works, but to be honest with a salmon doll like that, play around with the straps until you find something you really, really like. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a Hublot you do not see often. This is quite an early one from the Circa 2000s. Hublot Elegant MDM Automatic 41mm with the grey dial on the fitted rubber strap. Let's take a closer look. Now for a Hublot, and this is the MDM Geneve Automatic in the 41mm case. Really, really gorgeous watch, and you can see quite clearly the, how the evolution of design developed with Hublot. Uh, with this model into the classic fusion and the big bang and so on and so on. So this is the reference 19.1.0.1 uh, and this is circa 2000s. It doesn't come with any box or paperwork unfortunately but it does come with its Hublot service box and you can see really nice textured grey finish to the dial, date over at 3 o'clock and those proud luminescent hands as well as the luminescent dial. Now if you can see here between about 6 and just past 9 there is a slight stain on the crystal. Uh, we've been unable to get that removed, but it is there, but it's ever so slight. So um, to be honest, it doesn't really bother me, but again, obviously in the name of transparency as always, it's mentioned there. And the case, we have not had it polished, but you can see it's in pretty good condition. It's been worn, it's been enjoyed, and it's ready to be worn and enjoyed again. Screw down Hublot crown at three o'clock. And as we flip it over, you're presented with a screw down Hublot MDM case back. Inside there is an automatic ETA 2892-A2, so a high grade uh, ETA movement, and it comes paired on its fitted black rubber strap, as you can see with its Hublot signed buckle right there, which opens up to reveal the H of Hublot, hidden away in there, very nicely done. 
Really attractive watch if you're into this kind of thing. Obviously, if you're not, it won't be for you, and that's completely okay. Not every watch you have to like. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Hublot do get a lot of hate within the collecting community, and it's often unjustified in my opinion. The, the criticisms I hear of the brand are ones you could apply to so many brands. The most common one, usually being um, the design and inspiration. Well, again, that, that goes across the board really for a lot of brands. The other thing is the use of ETA movements. That one confuses the life out of me because it's almost as if they don't realize IWC, Breiling, so many others have used and continue to use ETA movements. And it's not a bad thing, you know, they're good movements. So again, whatever. Here it is on my wrist, 41 mil by 50 mil lug to lug, 11 mil on the thickness and 20 mil at the lugs. Obviously integrated fitted straps, I do keep that in mind. You'd have to go to Hublot for these straps. I believe they have some left, but please do check with them prior to purchase if that is your goal to buy some straps. So go check it out on the website today. From there over to a Vertex I've actually not had through the store yet. This is the Vertex MP45, which I've had, but this is the Heritage Edition, which has sort of the faux patina, the sort of slightly faded black dial on the vintage style strap really really cool watch of course manually wound as well rather than the automatic so you get that slight thinness but let's take a closer now look. on to the vertex mp45 heritage manually wound edition uh, which features really beautiful faux loom and as always with vertex they're super 3d loom that protrudes from the dial and glows super bright the sword hands and this is a mono pusher chronograph meaning one pusher does everything so start stop and reset, all done via one pusher. 30 minute totalizer at three o'clock, continuous running seconds at nine o'clock. And you have the broad arrow proudly stated at six o'clock and Vertex have every right to use it even though these aren't military issue. For those of you that don't know, Vertex were part of the Dirty Dozen that issued watches for the British military and their history can be read up on their website or anywhere else, they're, they're well documented and uh, restarted by a family member called Don, um, Don Cochrane, who's done a wonderful job with the brand and I really like the direction he's going, plus he's just a really nice guy, which always helps. So as I say, this is the MP45 Heritage M, as we flip it over, presented with an exhibition case back right there, showcasing a manually wound Salita SW510 uh, MP for manually wound, mon manually po uh, mono pusher. Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting all my words jumbled up there. This watch, it has been worn, uh, but it has been very well looked after. Um, so yeah, ready to be worn and enjoyed again. February 2023 with this one, it does come with its box and paperwork, additional straps that come with it as standard, but it also comes with the Vertex bracelet. Um, so you're getting a hell of a lot for your money in this package original strap with sign buckle as you can see. Let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. Here we go on my seven inch wrist, as you can see, really great proportions, obviously a slightly more cushion uh, case or seat case protruding at the crown guards. It was an iconic design for these watches. You can read more about that history on our website as well. So this is 42 mil by 49 mil look to look. 14.5 mil on the thickness, which is slightly thinner than the automatic version, and I do find it wears better personally for me. Um, and 20 mil on the looks, endless options, but between the straps and the bracelet, you're pretty much set. So go check this one out on the website today. From there to a 1968 Amiga Consolation. This is the C-Case Automatic, which features the, features the white gold fluted bezel, a beautifully sort of scratched linen dial, if you can call it that. It's really, really amazing uh, with the date as well. So let's take a closer look. Now on to a beautiful Amiga Consolation Automatic. This is a reference 168.029. It's part of the C-Case family, which means the sort of cushion case. And that is an 18 karat white gold fluted bezel, very similar to Rolex Datejusts uh, and watches like that that have a fluted bezel. Beautifully done, it has a slightly warmer tone than the steel, but it's ever so slight. And the highlight for me for this one is that beautiful textured linen scratch dog. I don't know what you'd call it, crosshatch. I mean, there's so many different names people apply for everything now. Um, I feel like you can just come up with your own. Um, Consolation Star at six o'clock and date at three o'clock, which has a chamfered surround. I don't think a lot of people realize that with these models, but when you catch the light, it really plays and looks beautiful. C-Case uh, has been worn. There are marks and dents and things like that, but again, it's still very, very good for its age, which is circa 1968, so definitely getting up in age. Original sign crown at three o'clock, original sign screw down case back. I do want to say we put it on a new watch gecko strap. These straps, the tolerances are super tight, especially on vintage watches. So you get that squeak um, for a little while until it's properly worn in. So I do apologize, but you will get through it. 
uh, especially once it's on wrist, it doesn't really squeak. Inside, an automatic Amiga Caliber 564, uh, which features hand winding, setting in the first position, so keep this in mind. You obviously go around as you normally would to set the watch. And the last position is a pop date. So this is where you pull it out and it pops the date. So you go in and out like that to change the date. Hopefully that makes sense. Always making sure like every watch, you're not doing that when it's in the date change position, meaning the hands are way past, in my opinion, 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. Just try and go all the way around to make sure you're fully out of that position. They show this one on wrist and talk dimensions because it's beautiful on the wrist. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, you can see that just hugs the wrist beautifully and that textured dial just plays with the light. Right there, it's doing so many different things. So this in dimensions is 34 mil by 14 mil lug to lug and thanks to the seat case, it wears bigger than that. Only 11 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lug, so a little awkward, but there are plenty of options out there. So go check this one out on the website today. From there to a King Seiko, I didn't know I wanted until I saw it. And this is the King Seiko Brush Grey Dial 37 mil SPB 281 J1. It is absolutely gorgeous, monochromatic. It looks incredible on the bracelet, so let's take a closer look. Now onto a really attractive and super underappreciated Seiko, in my opinion. This is the King Seiko Automatic with the silver brushed dial, specifically the SPB 281J1. You can see the vertically brushed dial right there in the same tone as the stainless steel, uh, which creates this very monochromatic look and I think it's super attractive, especially with this brick style bracelet right there. You can obviously imagine on different straps, it's gonna look completely different as well. And I do have to say, I find these King Seikos to be a real step up in build quality compared to just standard Seikos at similar price points. I would say you're getting very close to Grand Seiko territory with these, with the finishing on the dial, the hands and the indices. Um, and to be honest, the overall finish, finishing of the cases and bracelets, like look at the chamfers on each individual link. That's really impressive for the price and the finishing is just excellent. But anyway. King, Se King Seiko sign crown at three o'clock, uh, push button, hidden clasp right there with King Seiko stated, nice King Se Seiko screw down uh, case back, and inside is an automatic Seiko Calibre 6R31, so part of the six series of Seiko movements, very, very good, reliable movements. And this one's from July 2022 with its box and paperwork, and it's priced to fly in my opinion, especially compared to retail price. You're getting yourself a hell of a lot of watch for the money and super dynamic and beautiful. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go comfortably on my seven inch wrist. Again, another one of those watches, as soon as you rotate it around your wrist, you catch all different kinds of light, whether that be from the dial itself, the indices, the hands, the case and the bracelet. Like it just really looks incredible and punches well above its price point. So this is 37 mil by 43.5 mil lug to lug, 12 mil on the thickness and 19 mil on the lugs. Little, uh, little awkward, but there are obviously options out there from Watch Gecko and other, other brands. So go check this one out on the website today. And we're coming on to the last two, a brand I have never heard of or stocked before. And this is the York and Front, uh, the Borard Series 001 limited edition of just 300 pieces. A really nice bit of kit, especially for the money with an STP movement as well. So let's take a closer look at this one. Now onto a watch I am very impressed with for the price, way under 500 pounds. This is a York and Front, um, part of the Barada series, 001 limited edition of 300 pieces total. You've got this really nice white dial, which is super white, and it sort of plays with the light and applied indices, which have this brushed finish, which again, really lend themselves to being sort of enjoyed in different lights. Nice, um, I guess you'd call them pipette hands uh, with a red tip second hand. There's not really an awful lot to say over then. It's just really nice, simple, and well done. As we take a look here, uh, York and, what's it called, York and Front. <laughs> I forgot the name of the brand, that's terrible. York and Front sign crown, which is screw down. Uh, really nice, simple case, but again, nice chamfers. And as we flip it over, York and Front signed case back as well, proudly stating everything as well as the limited edition number right there. And the fact this is Swiss made with an automatic STP, caliber 1-11 inside is quite impressive. Um, so Swiss movement, Swiss made, and everything like that. Screw down crown, super solid feel, really nice elegant dial. And this one's from September 2021 with his box and paperwork and two straps. So you've got this nice brown strap with a sign buckle. Again, signed by their brand and another strap in there. 
um, really, really nicely done for the money. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrists. So nicely proportioned at 38 mil by 44 mil lug to lug, only 11.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options. And for a watch of this price, I think it rivals any Seiko, uh, like affordable Seiko in the same price point confidently. So definitely check this one out on the website today. From there over to a brand I've seen on Instagram a fair bit, but never had one in person. I have to say I'm very impressed, especially for the money. They're an absolute bargain. And when they become pre-owned, even more of a bargain. It's the Kuoi, I'm butchering the pronunciation. I have no idea how you say the brand name. Kuoi, I'm gonna say, or Kuo. Um, Old Smiths 90-002 automatic black dial 35 mil obviously inspired by the Smiths military watches and they've done a really good job. So let's take a closer look. Now on to a brand I can't pronounce yet, so please don't attack me in the comments for it. I think it's Kuo um, and it's Kyoto, J Japanese made, which is pretty damn cool, but uh, nice simple design as you can see, very heavily inspired by the old uh, military watches of the day, specifically I would say the Smiths W10 with those sword hands and uh, the numerals, the way they're laid out and everything like that, the minute track and the simple mechanical. You can imagine if it had a little broad arrow on the dial, that is a military watch through and through. Nice crown at three o'clock, obviously signed and a polished case throughout. And as we flip it over, you're presented with a screw down case back stating Old Smiths um, right there, again, I, I believe a reference to the fact this is inspired by Smith's watches. This is the reference 9-002. Inside is actually a Seiko caliber NH38, so a nice, reliable, affordable movement, uh, which is very good. And this one's from January 2024 with its box paperwork and original brown strap, which again, really suits the design of the watch. And the nicest thing about this one for me is the size. They've kept to 35 mil, I think a really nice profile size. I would probably swap this out onto sort of like a black NATO, um, and I think it would actually look like a really cool military watch. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Obviously that dome crystal makes it really reflective to different lights and it does different things. So do keep that in mind, um, but a really attractive watch. And as I say, the size is perfect in my opinion. And for 250 quid, you really can't go wrong with this. That's how much we're asking. I think it's a bargain. So 35 mil by 42 mil lug to lug, only 12.5 mil on the thickness and 18 mil on the lug. So endless options for this one. So go check it out on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls, this week's drop from around 250 pounds all the way up to way over 5,000 pounds. It really is something for everyone in this week's drop in terms of price, in terms of style, in terms of age, in terms of aesthetic. That's exactly what we want to achieve. And at the end of the day, you know, when I started this business, I would often find when I'd meet with collectors and they'd show me their collection, it wasn't just one style or one thing. For the most part, of course, there are collectors out there like that, but for most collectors I dealt with and spoke to, they had a range. So why shouldn't the dealer they deal with also stock that range? And that's what I've always wanted to achieve and I can't complain, it's been going amazing and that's thanks to you guys and girls. So I really do appreciate it. And we'll see you all again next week for another incredible drop, really again ranging in styles and all kinds of things. Um, including a Christopher Wall Bel Canto, which is very cool. So we'll see you all again next week. Take care.